So Pat Condell has made another classic video of his, another video of his filled with factual errors and the usual standard bigotry. Now, before I address his factual errors, I want to address his bigotry. I mean, for starters, it's an irony, isn't it? Pat Condell and his fans always sit there and they act like they're the high moral ground. You know, they always act like they're the ones speaking against bigotry and generalizations, as he tries to point out. But the irony is that he's doing the very same thing that he's trying to speak against. And ladies and gentlemen, that's bigotry 101, when you don't know that you're the very bigot that you're trying to speak against. Now, what did Pat Condell say is that is so bigoted and that got him rave reviews. That tells you where his fans are coming from as well. I mean, that tells you a lot. So what did he say? Now, he openly said it for everyone to hear. He clearly said that Muslims are raised to treat women however they feel like. He said that. Now, I have a question to you, Pat. Have you been to every single Muslim household on this planet? Have you been to each one? Did you sit or stand in every Muslim household and did you witness Muslim parents telling their children, hey, son, when you grow up, you can do whatever you like to woman? Did you witness that? We all know the answer, and that's a no. So how dare you have the audacity to sit there and make a generalization on over a billion people? Hmm? I mean, who are you? I mean, talk, talk about generalization. This guy just made a generalization on over a billion people. You get that? A billion people. I mean, I grew up in a Muslim household. My parents never once taught me that I can do whatever I like to woman. So I'm living proof that that claim you made is false and bigoted because that's a generalization based on no proof. And to all the Muslims who watch this video, please leave your comments. Did your parents ever teach you that you can grow up and treat woman however you please. Please, let everyone see what a bigot Pat Condell is. But as I said, this is the great paradox. This is the great oxymoron. This guy can sit up there, be a bigot on over a billion people, and then on the same time, this guy tries to speak against bigotry. But hey, in this current climate and context, being a bigot against a Muslim is normal. You can sit there and say such bigoted claims, and you know what? That, as I said, that's normal. He'll get uh, people saying, oh, you should be the prime minister. I'd love to see that happen, by the way. I'd love to see Pat Condell become a prime minister. I mean, that would be, that would be, an, that would be so comical. I mean, you are a comedian, Pat. I would love to see you become a politician and watch how you cause society to crumble. But anyway, that's a topic for another day. I'm getting a bit sidetracked. But now to the second point, to Pat Condell's factual errors. Nothing new there. Now in his video, Pat Condell makes a very, very major claim. I mean, he openly says that Islam condones and encourages rape. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is a very, very, very big statement and claim to make. And what a coincidence. In those five minutes of his video, he couldn't produce a single Islamic text that says, if a lady gets punished, she should, or if a lady gets raped, she should get punished, as he's trying to argue. That's his argument. And if you notice, in none of Pat Condell's videos, not one, has he ever brought an Islamic text that says, if a lady is raped, 
she should be punished. Big claims require evidence, my friend. But now, let's refute you. And this is going to be quite sweet. Now, coincidentally, coincidentally, ladies and gentlemen, we have an Islamic text that talks about a lady getting raped during the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So this lady was raped, and she went to the Muslims, including the Prophet, and she said she was raped. And guess what? The culprit was punished. He was executed. The guy who raped her. And guess what? There weren't four witnesses. Her testimony alone was good enough. Now, wait a minute. I am severely confused right now. I'm, I'm really I'm confused. I'm like in the twilight zone right now. Pat Condell claims that in Islam, if you get raped, you're going to be punished. But I have an Islamic text from the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where a lady is raped, she isn't punished, the guy who rapes her is executed, and her testimony alone was good enough. She didn't need four witnesses. Hmm, who should I side with? The actual text or the comedian, who, who is a comedian, he admits he's a comedian, or the comedian who can't even bring up a single text. Hmm, which one, which one? It's so hard, isn't it? Now, to another point, when it comes to rape, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to rape, a lady does not need four witnesses. Four witnesses are only required in terms of fornication and adultery. That's when you require four eyewitnesses. When it comes to rape, four eyewitnesses are not required. And that's a fact. All right? That's another point that we need to clear up. So now again, the reference is at the bottom of this video. And now, if Pat Condell and his fans aren't satisfied, then I have a challenge for each and every one of you. It shouldn't be hard after all. You keep making the claim, so please back it up. I challenge you to bring to bring just one, I'm not even asking for two, just one, 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 uno, just one Islamic text from the Quran or the Hadiths that say, if a lady is raped, she should be punished. Just one, please, please, just one text, because I provided you a text. Now, if you want to rebut what I'm saying, you need to provide your text. That's called a debate. A debate isn't when one side makes a claim and the other side brings the text and then the other side just makes another claim. That's not a debate. You need to provide the text. So please bring it if you have the truth. It's not hard, is it? I'm not asking for much. I mean, after all, as I said, you keep making the claim. So obviously this text must exist someplace out there. So please bring it for all of us to see. Now I know what some people might say. This is what Pat Condell might be thinking. Well, if Islam uh, doesn't teach that rape victims should be punished, then why do some Muslims punish rape victims? I didn't know I was um, debating with two-year-olds. I'm sorry. I thought I was debating with someone intelligent. So why do some Muslims do it if Islam teaches otherwise? Hmm. Haven't you ever heard of the concept called disobedience? I mean, were you just born yesterday? I mean, for instance, we have laws right now in our world. If we have laws that says... Robbing someone is a crime. Then why do people rob if it's not allowed? Gee willy, that's a tough one to think about, isn't it? I mean, seriously. 
people disobey rules. As I said, did you just wake up yesterday? You never knew that before, right? You never knew that sometimes people break a rule. I don't know, maybe, maybe I, I've been living in a box all this time. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, you know, as Joe Pesci once said, maybe I'm a bit messed up in the head, you know, maybe that's just me. And as I said, we have the Islamic text that shows that a lady was raped and the guy got punished. So if there are these bad Muslims who are punishing rape victims, then they need to provide the evidence, right? And didn't I challenge you? Bring that verse for me. But again, why do people do something that the religion says or doesn't advocate? Because they disobey. There are many things Islam teaches that Muslims go against. Islam teaches Muslims to not be racist. There are Muslims who are racist. Islam teaches Muslims to be good with their neighbors. There are Muslims who are bad to their neighbors. And on 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 it goes. Disobedience. I don't know. I, seriously. It's like... So, basically, that's the factual error corrected. But now, in conclusion, in conclusion, at the end of his video, Pat Condell says that we need to challenge Islam. You know, we need to challenge this belief and all of that. <clears throat> and uh, Muslims might get offended. Pat, who's stopping you from challenging Muslims and Islam? In fact, last I checked, Pat, you don't challenge anybody. You just sit behind a camera and you just make monologue videos. You have never once, no once, you have never once had the guts to take your challenges and challenge it with someone else. I, on the other hand, I've publicly, I have publicly debated my beliefs with people who oppose me, with people with opposite, um, opposing viewpoints. I've debated in churches, universities, public halls. I've stood publicly and taken the challenge. You've never done that. So don't go around talking about how, oh, we need to challenge these people, when you never have the, uh, you never have the guts to debate anyone on the claims you're making. Just like your hero, isn't it, isn't it ironic that all these people saying we need to challenge the Muslims never want to debate? People like Geert Wilders, Pat Condell, and Thunderfoot. These guys, they hardly ever debate with the people they oppose. Or as Richard Dawkins said, I will never debate with those people. So who do you want to challenge if you don't have the guts to go up and challenge someone in a debate? No one's stopping you from doing that. So what's stopping you, as I said? Go do it. Go challenge somebody. Take your arguments and take it to the public forum for somebody to be able to respond back. I dare you to do that. That's what a real person does. When a real person believes in what he's saying, he goes public and he takes on the people who are arguing against him, like I have, like many others have. It's nothing special. We all do it. So go ahead, do it. Go public and debate someone. Let's see how good you can do. Who's stopping you? Who's stopping you, huh? Who? Who? To all of you Pat Condell fans, what's stopping your hero from going out to debate? What's stopping him? And, and last but not least, I'm actually flattering you, Pat, because you're not a challenge, all right? I mean, I don't want to make you think that you're actually a challenge. My gym sessions are more challenging than your weak arguments. I, I mean, it's not like I'm not even breaking a sweat on these five-year-old arguments that you're bringing. So I don't want to put you up there on a pedal stool. You're not even, I don't think you're even worth anyone debating, all right? Your arguments wouldn't even hold any weight in any academic fields, all right? And, and that's just a fact with these arguments you're making right now. I mean, these arguments you're making are, are pathetic. I mean, the fact that you stand there and you say that over a billion Muslims teach their children to just go out and treat women however they please. I mean, you're a joke. As you say, you're a comedian. Sometimes I wonder to myself, Pat, are you an act? Is this like all a comedy sketch and 